Okay. Uh, this is our community's house. We are all guests in it here to serve our community. My name is Mike Little, Mayor for the District of North Vancouver, and the pleasure falls to me to welcome you all here to our regular meeting of council for Monday, March 13th at 7 o'clock. Uh, at this point, I'm going to call upon Councillor Hanson to deliver our land acknowledgement. Councillor Hanson. We respectfully acknowledge the original peoples of these lands and waters, specifically the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, and Musqueam, on whose unceded ancestral lands the District of North Vancouver is located. We value the opportunity to learn, share, and serve our community on these unceded lands. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Hanson. Okay, Council, we have an agenda that's been circulated. Any errors or omissions from the agenda as presented? Hearing none, will someone please move adoption of the agenda? I've got Councillors Forbes and Back. Call the question on the motion. All those in favor? Contrary-minded. Motion carries. Council, we have two sets of meeting minutes that have been circulated with the agenda package. Are there any errors or omissions from the agenda from the meeting minutes? Will somebody please move adoption of the meeting minutes? Moved by Councillor Back, second by Councillor Ma. Call the question on the matter. All in favor? Contrary-minded. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We have, uh, uh, just wanna check with the clerk. What have we communicated to the delegation? Will they be after the public input? They'll be after the public input. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Kind of Okay. So we reserve a period of time at the front end of all of our regular meetings of council for uh, up to 30 minutes of public input. Um, and uh, people can sign up in advance to the clerk or uh, show up at a meeting both virtually or in person and add their names to the list. Um, at this point, I believe I don't have anyone signed up to speak in advance of the meeting. So I'll just check, would anybody like to speak for three minutes to the council meeting? I see a virtual attendee, Corey Cost, uh, with your hand up. Uh, let's move uh, Dr. Cost over as a panelist. Dr. Koss, can you hear me? Um, yes, Your Worship, I can hear you and see you. I welcome. You have three minutes to address the council. Okay. Um, I think I'll share my screen because in the latest meeting, I took some, some notes and they might be worth sharing since there was really no opportunity at that workshop <laughs> to... Uh, I hope that fills the screen, or that you can see me move it. Can you hear me? We can see, we can see it, yes. Okay. Um, I noticed again, uh, as happens in virtually every one of these workshops, that the microphone sound levels are really still quite bad. I have to turn the volume of my speakers up so absurdly high that I'm fairly confident um, that is not my end that's responsible for, sh for such uh, muted or soft uh, voices speaking in the background. Uh, so I hope that can be addressed in future uh, council workshops. Um, the question I have about the, the contents of meetings, when will the public actually see the full budget that determines the full tax rates? And is the 5.25% tax increase now proposed inclusive of uh, Metro and GVRD taxes? I don't believe it is, but it'd be nice for a clarification in this regard. The cost to operate and maintain the spirit trails is stated as 1% uh, of our total budget. Is this going to be forever? And tripling our debt from 30 to $90 million seems to contradict the concept that we've had in the past of pay as you go. I think we're still well within the $250 million, but somehow $90 million does sound like uh, a lot of debt to, to go into, especially at these high interest rates we currently have. If you follow the trend, uh, sort of like in Amsterdam, cycling deaths will really, if you follow that path, will dramatically increase. There may be healthy deaths, but there'll be deaths nevertheless. Uh, for example, in Amsterdam, those tests now exceed that of the motorists. 
It seems that the priority has shifted from basic affordable housing for all to less essential items. And I do think they're less essential like playing fields and bike trails are less essential than fundamentally housing the people who, who are most in need of it. The 29th Street bike lanes do connect to the Western part of the district via Lonsdale and Queens, just to set that straight. Basics are being lost here. Simple patching our roads and potholes. I think that should be a priority. Anyway, you can see the rest of my comments and I hope they are a little useful as a sort of public feedback. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cost, for your comments. Okay, would anybody else like to address the council meeting? Okay, hearing none, uh, I'm gonna move on with the uh, rest of the agenda. And uh, oh. uh, the next item that we have is a delegation from Ocean Ambassadors Canada. And uh, we have Allison here to, uh, uh, to represent the organization. And just uh, for members of the public that are tuning in for the first time, a delegation, the rules are slightly different. Uh, the delegation is allowed to present for about five minutes. And then there's an opportunity for council to ask follow-up questions. And then the delegation needs to be received by motion at that time. And so a little bit different than just normal public input, uh, but uh, welcome. You have five minutes to address the council. Thanks, Mayor Little and councillors. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Allison Wood, and I am one of the co-founders of Ocean Ambassadors Canada. And I think um, councillors um, that were here in years before, I've, I've um, had the chance to speak with you before. Um, but a little bit about Ocean Ambassadors. So we are a local charity that is focused on marine stewardship. So our mission is to connect people with the ocean, to educate them about the health of our ocean and um, marine pollution, and then really to inspire people to want to care for the ocean. So it's, it's along the lines of Jacques Cousteau's famous quote, people protect what they love. So we really are, um, trying to inspire people to care for the ocean. So we run um, programs for young people. We do zero waste coaching and we're actually doing a small project with the District of North Vancouver right now where our um, staff are working with a number of small businesses to help them um, really practically just increase their sustainability. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, an exciting a new initiative called Pick Up Three. So it's, it's nothing big. It's just a worldwide movement that we're starting right here in Metro Vancouver, pick up three. So what we want is to have pick up three be a habit that everybody across Canada knows like they know the, the word participation. Is everybody familiar with participation? So if you say it and people use it commonly. So that's what we're aiming for. And we think that this simple, fun idea of just every time you're out in nature to pick up three pieces of garbage as a habit. And we want it just to be a, a thing that everybody, the, oh, we're out walking the dog, whatever it is. Oh, yep, have to pick up three. And I think what's um, exciting about pick up three um, alongside more organized beach cleanups and things like that is it's changing daily behavior. And what we're hoping is that we're not just stopping at picking up three pieces of garbage because we know we can't clean our way out of the, the mess of pollution in our environment. But once people start looking, they, they look and they realize how much garbage there actually is in all of our environments. And so what, what we're hoping we'll see is that people stop littering as much. And then they start seeing, wow, there are a lot of cup lids on the beach or on my trail or on my street. And then they start thinking, well, how am I contributing to that? So I'll bring my reusable cup. So kind of moving people up in sustainability through this fun entry point of pick up three. So I'll explain just a little bit about how it works. It's like probably the cutest kid ever. Hey, that little kid. Um, so just three simple steps. So visit a local beach or anywhere in nature, pick up at least three pieces of garbage, and then if you want to record your trash count online. So what we've created is a really fun, and if you go on, um, if anybody feels like now you could go on pick up three with the, the number three.org, we have a live trash meter. So what you can do 
is you go, go on and you find the trash meter on our website. And right now we're at 75,138 pieces of trash collected by our participants. We started last June um, and with an initial goal of 30,000, which we hit in the first five and a half weeks. So we're like, oh my gosh, we'll have to make 100,000. We're just about to launch on the North Shore. So we've really been focusing only on Delta um, because that's where we got our initial funding. Um, so we'll get to 100,000 and then we're going to bump it up to 500,000. So what you can do right now is you can go on and um, there's a drop down of, whoops, I didn't put it in there, but there's a drop down of you just put the beach you're at and the number of pieces of garbage. And then if you think about it, it's quite a fun thing for families and people to do. And um, right now we're working on a, um, an actual app with some additional funding that we've got. So you'll actually, it'll be personalized coming up where you'll be able to say, okay, it'll say like, hi, Betty, you've picked up, you know, 12,060 pieces of garbage so far. <laughs> and then she'll also be able to be part of a group. So she could be part of the district of, of North Vancouver. And so every time you pick up, you can assign your garbage to one, it could be your Rotary Club and the next week it could be something else. So quite fun. And then we'll have leaderboard. So we'll really gamify it. So I know I'm running out of time here. Um, so what we, we would like is the District of North Vancouver to be an official pickup three community. And we're asking the same of the other two North Shore municipalities. So what we'd like to do on June 8th, World Oceans Day, is to have a big launch media event where we say the North Shore is taking this action. Um, and what it would mean for the district would be having stickers with QR codes on garbage cans near beaches. Um, like this one here, the actual sticker looks like this. So it explains the initiative. So one, two, three, and a QR code. And again, not everybody used the QR code and that's totally fine. Um, so, so that would be one thing. And then the other thing is in Delta, we've actually had the Delta, the city of Delta is an official, was an official sponsor. And so they provided stickers and they actually provided this as a sign. So a really simple explanation and the QR code again, and then the sponsor. So it could have the district of North Vancouver. And they actually put it as a permanent sign as in one of their parks. Um, and the, there's just a map of the park above that. So they have that at the top of the trail and then they have the same thing at, at the bottom of the trail. Um, so I think it would be really great if, I, I don't know if this is asking for something, but um, <laughs> I think it would be really great if, the, if we could, um, have the district have all three North Shore municipalities and just um, get the, all of the community groups and we're, we've got the funding to be working with the schools. We're going to be in every school this spring talking about pick up three. So. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't see any hands from council. Council have an opportunity for questions. Councilor Pope. Thank you. Um, how much of a difference does this make to the ocean that this much trash is being picked up? Oh, that like the seventy-five thousand? Yeah, it's it's a drop in the bucket right now. But if we took this across Canada, which is our our goal, and then further, um, I really am a believer in individual action, because I think that it needs, there, we need to have individual action along with levels of government. But you know, the, the saying of like in Metro Vancouver, well, what, what does one my coffee cup make a difference? What does why one cup said 4 million people, right? So that's 4 million cups if we could change one, one less single use cup. So, so initially not a lot, but I think it's also in the moving people up in their behavior. Yeah. So we're not just picking up, we're trying to change hearts and minds. Yeah. A good question. I wonder if we, if I could ask staff to in, investigate um, <clears throat> um, liaising with the organization Ocean Ambassadors to see if this is gonna be possible for us to uh, get involved in for June 9th. We'll, we'll have the staff uh, talk to Ocean Ambassadors. Okay, any other speakers or questions? So, uh, uh, Councillor Forbes, after your 4,020 <laughs> visits to the beach, I think is what it was for you to get to your 12,060. <laughs> oh, she's going to do like 100 every time. 
I just wanted to ask you, you said you want to try and get it to be like a North Shore initiative uh, for the 8th, I think you said. Mm -hmm. um, have you already presented to the other two councils? Yes, I have. And did, what kind of feedback did um, you get? Great feedback, and we're working with staff in both locations. Good. I think it would be a great idea. And I think if we could get the whole North Shore. That, that and then compete be. against each other, which would be fun too. <laughs> Mark Sager really wants to do that, compete against each other. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors Pope and Forbes, can I count on you for a mover and a seconder on, on receiving the delegation? Okay, any other questions on the matter? Okay, we'll call the question on receipt of the delegation. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carries. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks so much for your time, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, council, um, I would like to propose a consent agenda. We have a number of items that I think are going to receive the consent of the council, but uh, so I would be proposing that we have a consent agenda with items 8.2, 8.3, and 8.4. And again, with a consent agenda, any member of council can ask to withdraw an item from the consent agenda um, for discussion. Sir, you're seconding the motion for the consent agenda? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm moving, yeah. I'm proposing it, yeah. Okay, I'll call the question on the consent agenda. All those in favor, contrary minded, motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, that means uh, for people who are listening in that items 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4 um, are consented to by the council, they passed without um, further discussion. Uh, meaning we can focus our time on 8.1 and 8.5. Uh, at this point, um, uh, we are, um, uh, up for second and third reading of our uh, bylaw 1422 and uh, the business license bylaw 4567. Uh, so this is re returning from a combined uh, uh, public, uh, both public hearing and public information meeting uh, uh, for these two items respectively. Uh, and this is the first opportunity for the council to really share their, their views on the matter. So I'm looking to council for uh, a direction and for comments. Uh, okay, I'll be moving the staff recommendation, seconded by Councillor Hansen. Uh, yeah, just uh, my own comments from uh, the, the hearing on this. Obviously, this is a, a matter of great import to the businesses that um, uh, have creatively used the public space, we'll say, from the time of the, um, uh, um, that the provincial government brought in flexibility during COVID. A number of businesses decided to try to use the public space in and around their businesses in a different way. And this sort of codifies how we're going to be able to um, work through the application process for those um, different businesses uh, going forward. It'll no longer just simply be on some emergency piece of legislation from the provincial government. We'll have our own codified response to, um, to those um, options in the community. Uh, I am supportive. I, I know that there are going to be times where we're still going to have to use our regulatory abilities uh, to um, uh, conflict manage in, in some spaces where there may be residences close by, um, but I'm confident that our staff have the, uh, the tools available to be able to respond to those situations. Uh, so I will be supportive of second and third reading of both items. Uh, Councillor Hansen, your comments? Yeah, thank you very much. My comments are similar. I'm very pleased to support these bylaw amendments. I note that this represents a continuation of a policy that was introduced during COVID and that has met with widespread public support. These bylaw amendments are required at this time to allow the outdoor patios to operate on a long-term basis. I note as well that the outdoor patios are widely supported by residents in an online survey conducted by the district close to 90% of respondents supported the patios. And this is consistent with the feedback that I have received from the community. Um, I thank everyone who made their views known uh, at the public hearing and in the public process. Uh, I note support from the North Vancouver Chamber of Commerce. I agree with the co-owner of the arms reach that individual businesses must ensure that patios are operated in compliance with all bylaws, including bylaws concerning hours of operation, noise and nuisance, and that businesses who fail to abide by these rules will be fined. In other words, the, the, the harms that were described to us, uh, I believe can be addressed through enforcement of existing bylaws. And uh, if, um, 
existing bylaws, in fact, do not address the issue, then we can consider further amendment to uh, such matters as ours. So very pleased to support uh, first, second, and third reading. Okay. Any other comments from council? Councillor Councilor Mott. Uh, thank you, Mayor Little. I also want to uh, voice my support, similar to uh, both Councillor Hanson and Mayor Little. Uh, my my key reason for supporting this is to support our local economy and the outdoor patios, as I have experienced them, do contribute to creating community. So I think that's very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Seeing no further speakers, I'll call the question on the motion. All those in favor, contrary minded, motion carries. Thank you very much, Council. Uh, the next item up for discussion is item 8.5. Uh, this is the UBC and Poverty Reduction Planning and Action Program, North Shore Poverty Reduction Strategy in 2023, North Shore Stream 2 application. And I do understand we have uh, staff here to uh, make some initial comments. Ms. Atva. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Little. Good evening, councillors and community members here tonight. We are very happy to have some time with you tonight to present the North Shore Poverty Reduction Strategy. This is attached to the council report. Uh, it was about two years ago exactly when we first came to Council and Council gave direction to apply for funding to pursue the strategy. This was a really great collaboration with our partners across the North Shore, our First Nations, municipalities and many partner agencies as well. The report, uh, I hope you will find the strategy and, and those who have a chance to look at it easy to read. There is a good executive summary. The report talks about some of the causes of po poverty. There are some shared stories as well that I think really help to describe the situations many face. There are four priority, uh, priority areas and many actions to guide us over the next 10 years. We're also very happy to uh, make use of, to have made use of funding from UBCM and one of the requests tonight will be to seek your direction to pursue additional funding to build on the momentum of the North Shore Poverty Reduction Strategy. With your permission, Mayor Little, I'd like to uh, turn this over to Erica Brampton the social planner for the District of North Vancouver to give you a, just a little bit more of an overview. Please. Great, thanks, Annette. Um, so good evening, Mayor and Council and uh, community for those that are watching from home. Um, I'm pleased to present an update uh, tonight on several of the North Shore poverty reduction initiatives that we have going on. Um, so as Tina mentioned, the first successful application to UBCM's Poverty Reduction Planning and Action Program was submitted in early 2021, and that was to develop a strategy for the North Shore. We worked in partnership with the other North Shore municipalities and the other uh, and the local nations, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh, and were guided by a poverty reduction task force um, that was made up of some of the stakeholders with similar mandates to support poverty reduction. Um, we listened to the community and who helped us formulate um, the four priority areas and the 24 accompanying actions um, that, you, that will help us guide regional poverty reduction efforts over the next 10 years. Um, endorsement of the North Shore Poverty Reduction Strategy is being sought by Council tonight. Next, in February 2022, Council gave direction to submit a second application to UBCM, and this was for the North Shore Solutions Navigator Program a low barrier uh, pilot program located at the North Shore Neighborhood House, um, and we were successful with that application. Two part-time navigators have been working to support residents living in poverty or with complex needs and challenging or significant challenges to access the right uh, services and supports on the, across the North Shore. Um, the staff report tonight uh, highlights some of the observations that we've noticed so far from this pilot, including that housing assistance is the primary request of residents coming through the door, clients need ongoing assistance due to physical or mental health challenges, that most clients um, in the pilot had not been connected to any service in the North Shore yet, and that follow-up is very important. Um, most clients are returning for additional supports. Um, creating a North Shore Community Connectors Network is the focus of our third application. Um, the need to formalize the network was based on feedback from community partners earlier this year and builds on the learnings of the Solutions Navigator program. The goals for the network would be to enhance interagency relationships among the partners that serve similar clients, to improve communication and information sharing about the available programs and services to better support clients, 
and to explore opportunities for collaboration amongst organizations to find efficiencies, better uh, understand each other's programs, and also to avoid any service duplication. If funding, the North Shore Neighborhood House would continue as the lead agency on this project. The deadline is uh, March 17th, um, and council resolution is required. The City of North Vancouver and the District of West Vancouver will have similar reports uh, provided to their councils in mid-April. So to recap, there are two recommendations before council tonight. The first is to endorse the North Shore Poverty Reduction Strategy, and then a second is, uh, to, is to direct staff to submit a joint regional application under Stream 2 of UBCM's Poverty Reduction Planning and Action um, 2023 intake. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Council, looking to you for direction on this. Councillor Hansen, you have a motion? Yeah, please do um, move the two staff recommendations. Thank you very much. Is there a seconder on the matter? Councillor Back. Uh, Councillor Hansen, your comments. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the North Shore uh, Poverty Reduction Strategies. I'm very pleased to support the two recommendations. I read the Poverty Reduction Strategy and attached report uh, with considerable care. Uh, let me say that I continue to find it alarming uh, that the North Shore has 10% of its po population living below the poverty line. It's also alarming that 40% of those people living in poverty are working. And it's also to me significantly disappointing that at this stage, British Columbia has one of the highest child poverty rates in the country with an estimated 99,000 uh, children currently living in poverty. Uh, there's obviously much work to be do to be done, and there's obviously a link between housing costs and uh, poverty. I wish the task force well. Uh, I wish uh, I hope that all levels of government, most specifically, find a way to work together to address this pressing community issue, and perhaps in in our own small way through these initiatives and others, we can be part of the solution. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Councillor Back. Yes, not much to add to that, but just thank you very much for all of your work. Uh, this is a really comprehensive strategy and I enjoyed uh, reading through it. Um, and I think the biggest thing I appreciate about, appreciate about the work you're doing is that it's so collaborative across the North Shore and we're, we're really working with all of those partner agencies as well, uh, many of whom are serving a lot of the same um, demographic. So I think where we can, you know, get them sharing resources and working together just makes so much sense. So um, I'm also very supportive of both the recommendations here in the report and uh, wish you wish you well. Thank you. Very much. Uh, Councillor Ma. Uh, thank you, Mayor Little. Thank you, Erica, for the report. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to say this without throwing it back on you. Uh, similar to uh, Councillor Back, I, I really um, found the amount of collaboration to be very positive, not only among the other municipalities, but with the First Nations. Um, I was wondering, given my background with BC Housing and having worked in the downtown east side, I, I'm wondering if your group also goes beyond the North Shore in terms of collaboration and maybe seeing how other municipalities might be trying to address this, um, the situation in downtown east side is you know a little more on the extreme, but I'm just wondering if there's any uh, work or outreach to those groups as well. Thank you. Um, through your worship to Councillor Ma, um, there is collaboration with uh, other regions. Um, you know, I do sit on the Metro Vancouver Social Issues Subcommittee, so a lot of the social planners come together on a regular basis and looking at the poverty reduction plans and the actions and activities in communities is one of the areas that we look at. Um, I think on the ground, we're also, there's uh, municipal staff representation with the North Shore Homelessness Task Force. Um, and at that task force, we have been involved with the 
uh, the BC poverty reduction uh, groups. So there is a lot of work and a lot of communication. Um, I think for us here, we uh, were excited to have uh, the three municipalities working collaboratively on these initiatives with both Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh. There's other grant or there's other grant opportunities that were also um, that bring us together. So there's the Strengthening Communities Grant, um, as well as some some other initiatives. So we find ourselves where many of these pieces are intersecting, and a lot of uh, you know programs and services are coming together to support. Um, specifically, we aren't um, reaching out to specific agencies in the downtown um, east side, but we do have uh, representation and connection through some of those uh, partnerships that I've, that I've mentioned. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pope, and if I can get you, oh, yeah, your microphone's in front of you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for this report. I. Um, it is such important work. Uh, the health of a community uh, depends on ensuring that we have equity. And it, like Councillor Hansen, it always disturbs me and surprises me the, the, the numbers of people living in poverty in this very wealthy community. 12.2% um, of children living in poverty on the North Shore, 11.6% of seniors. And so, um, of course, I totally support the continuation of this work and endorse the recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, just my own comments on the matter. I mean, a couple of, um, I, I've been on the North Shore Homelessness Action Initiative. I've been involved with a lot of these initiatives going back a long way. And I still think there's, two blind spots that we still have to address going forward. Um, there's very little discussion specifically about the impact on persons with disabilities in the community, and oh, they are far and away overrepresented in the poverty numbers uh, without the correct supports going to help people with disabilities in our community. It's hard for them to find employment, it's hard for them to find appropriate housing, and they're overrepresented in this group, and yet it doesn't seem like there's specific language to address um, persons with disabilities. Uh, the other one that I think, uh, um, you know, needs to be addressed in a future study uh, is specifically uh, uh, people who are living in um, uh, substandard housing, specifically cars and RVs. Um, this is an area that is growing immensely on the North Shore. The number of people who are living out of cars in and about um, uh, both the city and the district in particular. And as other municipalities, Vancouver and uh, Squamish municipality have banned uh, overnight parking of RVs in their spaces, we've seen more and more coming to other areas. And uh, I don't see, again, specific language addressing that issue. It is the fastest growing area of homelessness and insecure housing in our community. It needs to be addressed, it needs to be talked about, and I think we should be putting specific language to address that um, in. Uh, housing first policies, have not been successful at getting people out of um, RVs. Um, it's um, a very successful program with um, um, uh, families of children, and uh, but it, it has not been an effective tool for getting people out of RVs. You just have to go down and have a conversation with the people living in the RVs. And I've been here for 10 years, I've been here for 15 years. And, 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 and so, you know, they would have been offered housing in the interim time if they had been applying, but they're not seeking that housing. And so they continue to live in an insecure environment um, because the tools that we have at our disposal are not effective for their situation. And so I think that we need to, as we move forward with this, but uh, with any potential future study um, uh, resources, uh, start looking at what tools we could recommend to the provincial government to address people who are living in campers and RVs because that number is growing dramatically in our community and it is not safe and secure housing for people. Um, I, I do think that this is generally um, a, a very insightful, supportive document uh, and uh, I will be uh, both supporting the, the strategy and the partnership with the other North Shore municipalities. I did just want to put on the record there that I think there's some areas where we need to be pretty specific about addressing with that being persons with disabilities and persons living in vehicles, um, because uh, I think they need unique tools in order to be able to support them both. Uh, but I'll be supportive of the recommendation. Uh, Councillor Back. I was just going to ask, a couple of years ago, I uh, was involved in the homeless count that happened. Um, 
think it was maybe 2020. I'm just wondering when the next uh, homeless count is and if that's something that we could, if we choose to, to volunteer to be involved with. Ms. Atha. Thank you very much uh, to Councillor Back through the mayor. The homeless count was last week, March 7th and 8th. And uh, the uh, partnership on the North Shore worked with a lot of outreach workers and the service association that had been selected by the province to do the count. Um, there it will be, we'll wait their results. The last count was in 2020. At that time, there was an extended pilot count for the North Shore as well. Uh, there isn't an extended pilot count this year, there was not, but we look forward to hearing the results and, and seeing how the numbers have changed. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't have that date in my, in my calendar. I, I did uh, enjoy being involved with it and just kind of seeing um, where homeless exists in our community. I thought it was really eye opening. So thank you. Glad to know what happened again. I see no further. Oh, Councillor Pope. Oh, picking up on your comment about the RVs and such, um, the R use of RVs is greatly expanding because of the housing crisis we're in. And I was surprised, and so was Councillor Back, when we made, met a reporter the other day who lives in an RV. She's well paid, uh, I know from her job, but there's just no possibility of her living in uh, anything else at this point. So it, it is expanding hugely and it's not just among people who are otherwise homeless or in, living in poverty. And it is something we need to be looking at in terms of the housing crisis. Thank you. I see no further speakers on the matter. Call the question, all those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, uh, we have opportunity for reports. Um, just, uh, I did want to comment specifically on uh, the wastewater spill that uh, raw sewage spill that's been um, occurring over the last uh, week at least in the uh, Capilano River. Um, there is a temporary um, a catchment basin and they have vac uh, vacuum trucks being used to uh, clear out that basin in order to be able to stop raw sewage from going into the river itself. Um, and uh, it, it appears to be at least working to stop further uh, pollution of uh, the river. Uh, going forward though, this is going to be a very complex uh, um, affair to get this fully back to restored. Uh, because the um, uh, uh, um, trying to identify where the break is with a build a group of buildings that are at least 50 years old with that the plans are not necessarily up to date. Um, both identifying where it is is going to be complex and that may take weeks, but also uh, if it happens to be on one under one of the built areas that they need to be able to replace it may take months in order to be able to actually replace and repair the pipe or do a workaround somewhere else on the property in order to be able to do it. So we're at the beginning of a long road of restoring this uh, space. Uh, that doesn't even mention uh, the fact that um, obviously pollution has occurred on the lower part of the, the river um, through that area and the mitigation efforts that may have to go um, into that. Uh, but it is, um, uh, it's being closely monitored now by the Ministry of Environment. And uh, at some point it'll be turned over to our capable staff to work towards a, um, a solution to, um, to replace the sewerage pipes in and around that area that need to be at that point. Um, but um, uh, very frustrating to see it. We wanted to see uh, quicker action and, uh, and uh, uh, people uh, very proactively uh, supporting a solution in that area. It looks like now, like all of the parties are working together and I'm happy to say that there is a, uh, an appropriate temporary uh, uh, catchment to stop further ingress of raw sewage into the into the river. Uh, Councillor Hansen, uh, do you have a report? Yeah, thank you very much. I wanted to report out on a meeting of the North Shore Standing Committee of Substance Use that occurred uh, this last Thursday. Uh, this was the first meeting of this body in this council term. I was uh, re-elected chair uh, of the body. Uh, for those who are not familiar with this uh, committee, it's an interesting collaboration of all of the elected officials across the North Shore, uh, public health officials, 
law enforcement and First Nations. Um, I, I, rising out of uh, that meeting, I wanted to bring to the attention uh, of, of the council, uh, the current state of affairs with respect to opioid deaths. Um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, in the month of January, opioid deaths continued at a rate of 5.8 a day across the province of British Columbia. And what's important to understand, we had a presentation from a public health official, uh, Alexander Choi. What's important to understand is that those are distributed all across this province, including the district. We have our share. Uh, they're occurring within uh, single family homes. And, and a very important point that I wish uh, to broadcast across the community is that most people who die of opioid deaths are not known drug users. So think of your own family members. Uh, you may not uh, be aware that they're opioid users. Well, they're exactly the type of people who are dying of opioid deaths across the district. Uh, I hate to say it, but every day. There's a profile, people who have mood disorders, a propensity to depression. Uh, young men are the most uh, commonly afflicted uh, from opioid deaths, but um, it, it's, we talk about housing crisis, well, that's true, but this is also a, a screaming public health crisis. And I will be continuing to report back to this body on the activities, that is to say North Vancouver District Council, on the activities of the uh, North Shore Standing Committee on Substance Use. We are uh, meeting again in June. We are gonna set an aggressive agenda with respect to activities during this council term. And uh, we hope we can play some very, very small part in uh, addre addressing this issue across the North Shore. But that's my report. Thank you, Councillor Hansen, and thank you for your service on that committee. Councillor Forbes, you have a report? I'm gonna check your microphone if I can, just to have it. There you go, thank you so much. I just wanted to mention that I attended a all day uh, Pacific Business and Law Institute meeting on Friday. And um, I came away very impressed with the amount of topics they covered uh, and uh, the speakers that they had. The mayor of Lillooet was there speaking about um, disaster response, and also the ex-CEO of Fort McMurray, who's now in Nova Scotia. So it was a very interesting thing. And the main, some of the main things that they covered, they updated us on case law and legislative updates of what's going on in Ontario and what's happened here in BC. And Ontario's scary. <laughs> We're not anything like Ontario, and I hope we don't get to be like that. Um, there were updates on FOI, um, affordable housing in Victoria, the missing middle housing, short-term rentals, um, tenant assistance policies, rental um, property standards, tiny towns, drug discrimination and impacts to communities, emergency preparedness, and the, what they call the strong mayor system versus the weak mayor. And strong mayor pretty much refers to Ontario. And it's scary how much power they are controlling and they can control, if not currently, they will. Um, for instance, uh, councils, uh, motions that council can pass with just one third of council agreeing. Yes. And if a mayor really wants to have no council, he could do that. So um, I would advise people to sort of keep their ear open because Usually BC sort of follows after Ontario within a few years or so. I'm not saying that's gonna happen here, but I'm just be aware when you hear strong mayor, weak mayor, it has nothing to do with the personality. It has all, everything to do with the politics. So I came away from that really, really enjoying it and learning an awful lot. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ma, your report? Um, this is kind of an advanced report. Um, Councillor Back and I are planning on attending a, a fire jumping uh, celebration tomorrow as part of Persian New Year. Uh, since we're not meeting next week, I wanted to wish on behalf of council, uh, wish our Persia neighbors a, a happy new year. There you go, thank you. 
Mr. Stewart, you had a, a just, report? Just a quick uh, uh, note uh, to council. I have a copy of the paper binder for that workshop that you attended, and I'll leave it in. I'll leave it in the uh, council's room. Thank you. Yeah, if you can just leave the strong mayor parts in my office, that would be appreciated. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it. Councillor Pope. I'm also attending the fire jumping. I'll see you guys there. Um, I attended last week the SFU's Renewable Cities uh, seminar that was here at the uh, Delbert Community Center. It's their housing solutions lab, and they've um, launched a pilot project in the district of North Van. Um, and just I'm just going to read this because it best explains it. Underutilized single family homes are a significant untapped opportunity to create a much needed rental housing supply on Vancouver's North Shore and beyond. And that's what they're doing. They're gathering information from people, seniors in particular in single family homes to figure out you know, how they could share their house with somebody else or how, um, how they could be incentivized to build a suite or have um, an extra uh, space on their property, um, something like that. They're looking at all the options. It's fascinating because um, for me, before I bought my tiny 375 square foot condo, <laughs> Years ago, I saved for a deposit by living uh, with a with a senior citizen uh, in her very large home in Carisdale while I was a reporter at Global Television. And you know what? It was one of the best experiences of my life to have that relationship with a senior. So I think this is just one other tiny piece in the puzzle of our housing crisis. And... Um, I hope that at some point the district can support this work and promote it and bring all our people who have single family homes on, on board in the district to uh, share their homes or consider some other types of possibilities. Thank you, Councillor Pope. I see no further hands. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as we wrap up the meeting, uh, first I want to express my appreciation to staff for preparing the reports for consideration for council this evening. Thank you very much for your time and thank you to members of the public for sharing your comments with us uh, and sticking with us through the meeting tonight. I want to wish all everyone a fantastic spring break for those that have kids in high school uh, and, and elementary school. That probably means it's not much of a break, and, uh, but uh, wish you all well. Have a fantastic evening. Good night.